All right, well, I thought it might be kind of interesting to make a little video here showing rebuilding or at least reassembling my uh, scroll chuck, three jaw scroll chuck. So this, um, this chuck I bought off eBay if I remember correctly. I don't, I don't remember the brand exactly, but I use it on my tag lathe as you've seen in some of the other videos. Oh and by the way I I plan to get back to doing the tag lathe diary. I just haven't uh, just been working on other stuff and I was involved in a motorcycle accident so that kind of threw me off. Um, anyways I took this apart the other day uh, cleaned it all out and uh, I'm getting ready to reassemble it. I'm going to use some of this uh, ceramic uh, finish line ceramic grease for the first time to uh, reassemble <clears throat> me. and this uh, this is supposed to build up a kind of a ceramic finish so I thought I'd give it a try um, anyways you can see the pieces of the chuck here this is you can see uh, this is the front of it here and this is the internals um, there's a I guess this would be the ring gear I suppose and you can see why they call it a scroll chuck because it's got a little scroll here that pulls the teeth in. Um, I've cleaned it in the sink, degreased it, put a coating of oil, and uh, like I said, I thought it'd be fun to just kind of uh, videotape reassembling it. So uh, first things first, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some grease on here. Take this and just uh, grease this track down in here. And um, yeah, that should that should be good. And then also in here, a little bit where the uh, the screws ride. Hopefully this is coming out okay. I've just got the camera suspended above me, so I can work without uh, having to hold onto the camera. Um, Okay, and then so let's see here. If I remember correctly, first things first is this the little ring gear, put a little bit of grease on here, and then this, let me move the key out of the way, and then this just goes in here. Let me get a little grease on this side of this thing here. Anyways, I just thought it was kind of interesting to see how the internal workings of the chuck are set up and how it's designed, so I, I wanted to uh, make a video. Uh, the reason I took it apart was I was uh, I was actually cleaning the lathe in the sink and I noticed the chuck was a little bit rusty so I cleaned it and then it um, it was the chuck was leaking water all over the place so I figured I'd better take it apart so that it didn't rust internally all right, let me see if I can get this down in here. Just got to kind of seat this. Okay, so that's down. So you can see that turns freely now. And then, let's see, if I remember correctly, the next part was these little uh, kind of pinion gears I suppose which uh, accomplished turning the scroll and of course the scroll is what uh, draws in or moves out the, the jaws on the chuck and it appears this it appears this chuck is reversible um, I usually just buy two chucks and then I put one set up one with the gears in one orientation or uh, set up the teeth in one orientation then set up the other one because it's kind of a nightmare sometimes to change the teeth if you're working on a job. It's a little bit hard to get them started sometimes. Okay, and then you can see there's a groove in here which these uh, long screws kind of index with and that's what keeps the, uh, the little uh, pinion here from getting back out. So we want to get some grease down into the, the tr 
track here. And like I say, this finish line grease is pretty good. I use, I use several of their products. Um, never really use this one. Or no, I think I might have put this one on the chain for the motorcycle, but didn't really care for it. So, but it, it might work okay here. And uh, I believe it's designed to build up sort of a microscopic ceramic coating the more you use it. Anyways, we'll see how it does on the chuck here. Okay, so then these guys just go in like this. All the way around. I don't, I don't believe there was any order to them specifically. Okay, and then you can see, let me move this uh, out of the way. You can see how this operates, depending on which, uh, kind of like a chuck on a drill press, I suppose. So that, let me get a little bit of grease down into the ring gear here. Okay, anyway, so these go in next into these little uh, little guys here. And actually these that intersects with that groove. And there's one for each little uh, gear. Okay, I'll come back and tighten those up here in a second as soon as I locate the screwdriver. Um, anyways, okay, so next up is this little backing plate, which, or no, wait, let's see, yeah, this little backing plate, which kind of serves to uh, keep the, um, the ring gear down in its little location. And uh, so we're, I'm going to grease this up a little bit here. Put this guy in. And there's three little screws right here which hold the backing kind of deal on. Speaking of backing plates, uh, this one I had to I had to uh, finish this and cut it on the tag lathe because it originally had, as I recall, it had a, a longer um, area here which was causing problems with the threads and um, also when you purchase them sometimes they're not they're semi fitted which means this little index here that fits down into this little ring is not cut exactly right or is not cut to fit in it's oversized a little bit and the reason for that is so that when you put it on your um, your spindle for the lathe then you can cut it and that makes it uh, concentric to the center of the lathe so then when you mount the chuck on um, you get you're supposed to get a little bit more accurate uh, indexing of the chuck to the center of the spindle so um, and this thing here is I think it's semi cast iron because it it was very difficult to cut um, I had to use I can't remember if I used carbide or I might have had to use uh, high-speed steel Anyways, I had to operate the lathe at a terrifically uh, slow RPM because it, it has enough of a, it almost has a quality like a grinding wheel. And so as you cut it, it's almost like sticking the tool bit into a grinding wheel, which uh, just grinds it down. So, okay, and uh, I'll come back. Oh, there's my screwdriver over there. All right, let me tighten everything down here. As I mentioned, I was involved in a pretty bad motorcycle accident uh, a couple of months ago. Broke my wrist in four places and uh, destroyed the motorcycle or pretty close to it. Um, I know a few people on the channel keep tabs on the motorcycle and, and what have you. So I'm going to do a video 
probably the next few days that kind of show the state of the motorcycle. I actually have it completely disassembled, uh, and it's all over the it's all over the garage. Uh, but I purchased some parts um, to uh, rebuild it, so I'm gonna probably document that. I was also gonna go over the gear that I had on and uh, kind of discuss what I did right and what I did wrong. Uh, at this point, I'm just happy I was not hurt more seriously or uh, killed in the accident. So, But uh, I'll make another video that shows the bike and also maybe discuss the issues with the, the gear and uh, maybe the tires and kind of recount what I feel contributed to the accident. Um, okay, so here you can see we're reassembling the chuck. And this is a pretty good little truck. I think I got it for maybe, I think it was maybe 80 or 100 bucks, 130 bucks off eBay, as I recall. Uh, I don't recall the brand. It might be that uh, SARS, SARS one or whatever it's called that I purchased. I think it was actually SARS or something like that. Uh, and uh, the reason I got it was because it has a larger through hole. Let me see what. What size that is? Uh, the chuck, uh, excuse me, the tag lathe has a relatively small through hole, which can be kind of a problem sometimes. Um, this has uh, 0.875, so uh, what was that? Seven eighths of an inch. Um, so eight, uh, over eight hundred thousandths, almost nine hundred thousandths. And um, uh, because of the depth of the chuck, it um, it helps out quite a bit because you can you can put parts in here. It's almost like having um, it's almost like having a larger through hole on your your headstock. You can't go all the way, obviously, but you can get a lot of stuff in here. So it's I find it to be really helpful. Um, and also, it's so heavy that the you know, once you get this thing turning, the, the momentum helps you kind of uh, drive through cuts that the tag sometimes will stall out on with its smaller chuck. So, um, anyways, and I can't remember, I don't think I had to tap the, the spindle. I think, um, I do have a tap this size, but I think it was already tapped. And like I said, I just had to, I just had to part off some of the backing plate because it was it was way too too deep as I recall so and then I think I had to turn this inside here so um, anyways let me let me see about restarting the teeth now I don't know if you can make it out on the camera here but uh, the jaw the teeth are marked so uh, that looks like one over there two over here three over here and the jaws are marked uh, three, two, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see it there. It's not these numbers here. It's the front one there on this particular set of jaws. And number one. Okay, so the way this works, and I, sometimes it's a little tricky, so I don't know if I'll be able to get it on camera here, but as you turn this, you can see there's a spiral that goes around and there's a beginning point right there you can see it uh, right there to the spiral so that's the first pickup point and I forget if it's you have to look at your jaws so let's see here three two one okay so if you look at them you can kinda you can kinda see which one picks up first you can see the, the the corresponding grooves here for the spiral, and like I say, that's why they call it a spiral chuck or a scroll chuck rather, because there's a little spiral scroll in there. But um, anyways, you can see which one picks up first. So you, if you look at the if you're putting the jaws in this way, if you look at the front of the jaw, this one is in closer than this one, and then subsequently that one. So let's see if you pick this one up first as the scroll moves around 
is going to pull in and then they're going to have to offset so yeah so let me see here number number one is over here so let's get the scroll the pickup point over on number one Okay, all right, there it is right there. So let's see if we grab jaw number one and put it in and turn. It should grab it. Nope, didn't get it. Okay, so there it's got jaw number one. Then we go over here, wait for the pickup point to come by. There it is right there. Grab jaw number two. Okay, and you can see it engaged in. And then we come around here. There's the pickup point on that one. And we get jaw number three in. Time this a little bit. Oh, there it goes. I think that got it. Yeah, that got it. Okay, so, and then you run it in to verify that you've got uh, that all the teeth uh, meet correctly. And there you go. So one thing uh, on these uh, chucks that are made in China and Taiwan or what have you, they're a little bit rough. Uh, I mean, they get the job done definitely for the money, it's great. Um, they're a little bit rough though when they operate because the edges are not machined perfectly internally But they do get the job done But if you compare this to like an old like a, Like a craftsman chuck Or like a, a bison or something like that or let's see what other one like a skin. I have a Skinner chuck That's really nice um, They're much smoother I don't, want, I don't want to say they're better, but they're definitely, they definitely operate smoother or more smoothly. Okay, and then the backing plate goes on here like so. And when you, by the way, if you ever have to finish a, a semi, uh, a backing plate that's semi-finished, be extremely careful when you turn it down because you've got to, it's got to be basically an interference fit, um, and that you, that means you know like one tenth of a thousandth almost, or maybe half of a thousandth because you start knocking it down too much. Like a th if you go under a thousandth, you'll get some compliance in there. So anyway, so the chuck's back together. I'll probably pull the teeth off and grease them a little bit but main thing was I wanted to just get the water out of this thing and uh, oil it up and clean it go through it um, when they make them in China sometimes there's a little bit of grit and debris inside so it kind of pays to to get to open it up and clean it so I just wanted to document how that works in case anyone else was curious about taking their their three draw scroll chuck apart and they also make four jaw and six jaw and if it says it's a scroll chuck then it's uh, It'll be set up in the same fashion and uh, is basically self-adjusting. So, And I, I prefer these myself. Um, I have some independent chucks, but uh, those are I use those only for very specific situations because they're just it's a nightmare to index those sometimes. So. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to, uh, to comment. Thanks for watching.